here we are checking out the new Apple TV. This is the actual Apple TV. It's a little puck here. Um, it's a little bit thicker, taller than the old Apple TV, but it's got the same footprint. So I'm going to walk you through the actual tvOS 10.0 interface and show you kind of how you use this thing. There are two main ways to use the Apple TV. First, um, the Apple TV is extremely integrative with all of the other Apple devices you might own. So if you have a Mac, an, I, um, an iPhone, or an iPad, any of those can share their screen directly with an Apple TV extremely easily. So that will allow you to do things like playing a video from your phone or computer, or putting up some photos that you have on your iPad, or really just to share anything else that you're looking at on your phone, you can mirror it right to the TV with extreme ease and um, extreme reliability. So it's just great for that. But the second um, way to interact with the Apple TV is really its standalone tvOS operating system. So we're looking at that right now. I'm holding the Siri remote and if you want to learn more about this um, you should check out our other video where we overview the remote in its entirety. But basically you use the remote, there's this trackpad at the top, you use that to slide around on an app page, which is what we have here, or you could also tap, um, tap to the right to move right, tap up to move up, and then when you find the app that you want to use, you just click on it by um, clicking the button. So here we're going to go into our Netflix screen and it's loading up. I haven't opened Netflix in a while, so it's reloading from scratch. And we've got you know the next Netflix spotlight. We've got some stuff we've watched recently, um, and so on. And we can just watch anything right here, right on Netflix, extremely easily. Like Zootopia is there. Just click right in. Um, play. So really easy to do. Um, easy to watch movies like this when you're in a movie. You can just you can click to pause. You can scroll around. I can stop anywhere in the movie and get it to play there. It's just buffering for a second. Um, here we are, and um, yeah, we'll come back to that in a minute. So um, this button here is the home button, which will take us back to our app screen, and we can do other things. If we double tap that home button we can get to the app switcher and slide back and forth between apps we've been using. Here's another app, speedtest.net, and basically all this app does is you can just click to do a speed test, and that's what we're doing right here, and it runs and it tests your internet speed connection. So there you go. I'm gonna use the menu button to get back, and we're back at the home screen. On this remote we also have volume, so we can control the volume of the T aim it at the TV, um, volume up, volume down, um, and we have the Siri button which allows us to do things with Siri, like firstly we can look up facts, what year is it, gave us the full date on that one, open Netflix, and there we are back in Netflix exactly where we were. It could do things for you in Netflix too, like, um, let's say, rewind one minute. So I actually picked up my voice from before, but, so there you've rewound one minute. Um, menu to get back one screen, and um, I'll go back to the home. So again, we can keep sliding around the apps. We could use Siri to open apps or ask for information. What's the weather for tomorrow? Brings up the weather. I could slide that up and get some more info. Um, now I'll go back. Um, and really that's that's the simplicity of the interface. At the top here we have our, it's kind of like a dock. Um, here's the movies app and we can actually see some of the top hits within that app by scrolling up. Um, here's the App Store app, and again, there's you know the top things trending, but we can go into the App Store app. This is really a key to what makes this Apple TV unique is that there's an App Store. So now developers can make anything and put anything up on the App Store. There's games, there's 
um, video apps, there's exercise apps, there's um, audiobook apps, and you can go, you can get any of these. You know, Netflix was an app that was downloaded from the App Store, and Jetpack Joyride, and YouTube, tons of great things. So you're gonna definitely want to do this kind of thing. Here's a new game, the Lego Batman. Um, I can view all sorts of information about it, and if I want to get it, I can just click get. Do I want to get it for free? I'll take it for free, and it is downloading just like that. Um, so there's tons of apps, tons of apps, and you get them from the App Store. There's also built-in apps. So here's like the Photos app, and you know it's taken me right to my photos that I've taken on my phone. This was an event I was at the other night, which was really sweet. Um, here is a screenshot of the weather from my watch. And there's a bunch of videos here that I'm thinking of posting soon. And um, yeah, some other stuff that I took. So pretty cool to be able to just pull your photos up. Of course, you could also um, you know, send them from your iPhone right to the screen using the share button. There's music, and music is great. Um, if you've got an Apple Music subscription, it's really great because you got all your stuff right here um, through through the iCloud, and you can also ask Siri to do anything with your music from anywhere on the TV. So here I'm just on the home screen, and I could say um, I could say play Beats One, and it'll start playing Beats One on the TV. I can click Open Music to get there, but if I don't, it'll just play it on its own. So here's Beats. I'm going to pause it with the pause button because I don't really want to listen to music right now. But I could ask it to play any song in my library or in the Apple Music Library. Um, the Settings app is really important. You're going to want to take a full look through here and uh, we'll do a separate video on just the Settings app because there's a ton in here that you're going to want to do. Um, although, you know, it's really pretty straightforward. You could just go through yourself and set it up. Accounts and you can sign into your iCloud and um, it's really pretty straightforward. I'm going to go back to the home though now. If you hold down on an app with the button, it becomes wobbly. You can press for more options, so you can create a folder, delete the app, you can move it to one of the folders that you've got, or you can hold it down and slide it to wherever you want it to go. Put the weather over here. Kind of just like the iPhone home screen. <clears throat> So like I said, there's all sorts of apps from video ones like Netflix and YouTube and iTunes Movies, which has a whole ton of movies, although um, as of now at least you need to buy them by the movie, so it's a pretty expensive way to watch when the alternatives are Netflix, like to buy this for 25 bucks, that's, I don't know, a few months of Netflix, which has basically unlimited movies, although these are the newer releases. Um, so you've got the video apps, you can also have, you know, VLC for example, where I can um, play media that I have stored on my network, on my network storage device, um, and then there's, you know, there's news apps where you can watch the news or get a news feed. Um, there are sports apps which are increasingly allow you to watch more through the sports or get news, headlines, all sorts of stuff like that. And then there's games, which are really great. Definitely going to do some videos on some of these. Like, here's an example, Crossy Road. Just downloaded this from the App Store and started playing away. So, basically, this is kind of like a Frogger-style game. You're trying to jump across the road and do it without getting hurt. Using the trackpad to slide. So, um, you can either click to go straight. So, that's kind of for faster movements. Or you use the... Uh, the slider thing to move from side to side. Here's some logs coming up, so it's kind of tricky. I got crushed by something, I'm done. So that's, you know, a fun game you can kind of play over and over. You can pass the remote around. Um, ooh, I got something. Drop there. Don't know what that is, but anyway. Um, there's a ton of other great games. Uh, here's Pop the Circle, where uh, basically, there's this circle that opens and closes, and you gotta catch the other circles. I'll show you what I mean. So, 
could actually just tap on the thing. And yeah, this is basically the game. Um, it's pretty fun with friends around to see who can get the highest score. So here's the example of the Zova app. And it's got all these workouts. Some of them are locked, meaning um, you'd have to purchase them. Some of them are not, so I'll click on this one. Uh, cardio power, start that. And it just basically trains you along on a workout. And they're doing it, you do it at the same time. Pretty, pretty easy, simple way to get a workout um, in front of the TV. Got the timer for you, um, and yeah. If you've got an Apple Watch, you can even connect that and get more out of the app. So, so I'd, I'd say it's pretty great. And there's a whole bunch of apps like these. Uh, and there are also, you know, all sorts of other apps. Anything else you could really think of that would be cool to put on the TV, um, people are just starting to do. So, like, here's a, here's a satellite app and shows you the globe and lets you do cool stuff. So. I was playing on here the other day, I was getting pretty close up in the Toronto area. The menu button gives me a menu, so I'm going to zoom out. And yeah, I mean, we got the globe. I can move around. It's pretty cool. There's other apps with, with art that show art. Um, and yeah, who knows what other kinds of cool things you'll get. Here's Twitter, so I guess I guess social media is coming to the Apple TV, so really there's a ton that you can do with this user interface, very similar to iOS with an app screen, you can click on apps, you can flip between apps with an app switcher for quick, um, for quick switching, of course um, you can use Siri, and um, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple interface, pretty simple to use, pretty powerful, like you can get whatever games or apps you're interested in. Yeah, and for a device that can do all of this, which really it's just the beginning of, and you can always just connect your phone and your, t your computer and um, really get this level of functionality of connecting with your TV um, in a really simple, easy way, this is a really good way to do it. Another element um, that comes along with this whole smart home thing and with Siri is that you can now control um, some of your smart technology um, right from your Apple TV and it's kind of becoming like a hub which we'll really cover more in another video. So for example I can say, push down the Siri button and say, turn off all the lights. And that's really a great feature to have especially right after you've started a movie and forgot that you didn't turn the lights off.